Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Hoya, and it's also there on the slide. I'm glad to see you all here this evening. It's not necessarily very sunny here inside, but I think we can all work with that. Well, to begin with, I would really like to thank the people who put their minds and hearts behind this project. Miss Julia, for the idea behind the whole thing today, she really was a lifesaver in getting us prepped for the presentation. The teachers for turning the occasional blind eye for me skipping a class or two for uh, rehearsing my speech. And the school more generally for the opportunity of being before you today. And I know to my girlfriend for uh, listening to my speech at least five times and embarrassing her over and over again with this very presentation. Well, it might sound ever so slightly as a cliche, yet ever, seen I, uh, ever since I've been to my first debating competition, and that's a while back now, I'm not that old, I wanted to be here on a TEDx stage to hold a speech just like this one today. Furthermore, it's an honor for me to share the stage with the, uh, such amazing people, people you are going to listen to tonight. I'm glad I caught the chance to meet them, and I can't wait to see what they're up to in the future. So, without further ado, please join me in a heartfelt round of applauses for all the speakers who so generously shared some of their time to be here with us today. With all that being said, we've gathered here with a simple reason of trying to harness the ideas we're all going to talk about today in order to reach success. Determination, risk-taking, flexibility and perseverance. Yet, before getting to the main idea, what precisely are these terms I've just mentioned? We need to explore that for a sec before delving to the main topic. Have you ever taken the time to ponder how these words relate to you, to your lives more generally? Well, I'm 18 years old, almost 19. So the examples I'm going to present you with, no surprise here, are my own experiences with things like extracurricular activities, applying to university, and high school life in general. I'm sorry, no billionaire toolkit just yet. Nonetheless, I think the best way to begin our approach is with some simple definitions of the terms at hand. Determination. That's the desire, the will, to do something or to achieve something in spite of the effort that must be spent to do so. The effort can range from the tiny to the great, but what matters is that you keep on going forward on the path of achievement. That effort is, as a rule, directly proportional to the determination. An equation of sorts if you want, if you didn't have enough maths just yet. Flexibility, that is the ability to adapt to certain events or needs, perfectly suited when one needs to sit three um, tests in a row. Nonetheless, it is a very important quality to have, regardless of your age, perspective, or objectives. Perseverance, that is the willingness to go on with something, perhaps especially when time and effort must be spent on doing that. This term is closely linked to determination. Perseverance is the vessel determination uses to sail the harsh waters of doing anything. As such, you can't have one without the other. And risk-taking, well, that's pretty much what it says on the label. That's just taking risks, nothing particularly special, if I'm to be honest. Yet it is extremely important to know how to manage your risks and how to seize your opportunities. With that taken care of, the first example that comes to mind is the easiest one I can give you. The largest project I've been involved as a manager until now. And definitely something that put me in the position to face each and every of our predefined terms. The Model United Nations, or MUN conference, I've organized at our school, CSB MUN. Long story short, this enterprise was the main focus and fruit of labor for a couple of dozens of people, both in and outside the school, some of which I'm extremely proud to see in the audience today. Over many months, especially as most of us are 12th graders and therefore drawn up in the well-known tangle of college applications, a project which received, fortunately, and if I'm to be honest, not entirely expectedly, quite positive feedback. I'll get back to this example in a little bit from now. So, how did we accomplish the result we set our minds to? And perhaps more importantly, how can a student achieve similar feats in any project they seek to take a part in? Well, for those seeking to cut corners, I admit I don't have the universal recipe for unlimited motivation and complete success. If you do, please call me. 
but I can offer you advice from my own experience, hope you'll find it useful and give you the next best thing. Let's get to it then. Perhaps the most important thing to do is discover what you most want in relation to the project that you desire to be involved in and why. The thing that you want to accomplish can be ranging from a lengthy extracurricular project to an important college application to even the maths test the day after tomorrow. What do I want to achieve and why? The reasons behind doing something can vary in nature tremendously, from the grandiose. Maybe you're studying to become a medic in order to follow a long life dream uh, to help alleviate people's suffering and curing their diseases. Or you're reading that physics book you've just bought in order to discover that very obscure principle that is going to win the Nobel Physics Prize 30 years from now. To the seemingly trivial, perhaps you want to get into that famous college in California because you really like the weather there. And, well, what is there not to like that's ideal college weather? Um, if they mean anything to you, although they might not seem that important, they can become the driving force behind your efforts and the means by which you will succeed. With your reasons thoroughly thought out, the process of getting there will not only be easier to get figured out, but also much easier to follow. And as a general rule, the easier it is to follow, the greater your chances of success are. Yet, how can one visualize this better? How can you implement these ideas in order to achieve what you set out to do? Let's get back to the example I've mentioned earlier. I, for one, think that the best way to visualize something is with an example in your mind. The conference thing, MUN, are conferences held by students, for students, that seek to replicate the workings and diplomacy of the United Nations. You know, the thing with the countries, the formal complaints, and the peacekeeping troops not all over the place. In order to help people develop their abilities and knowledge of the framework of international diplomacy, among many other skills. So far, so good. These events usually involve around 150 delegates, maybe more, each representing a country in a committee on a specific topic, ranging from stopping wars, increasing the access of education for children, or fostering trade between member nations. And 50 members of the organizing board, that's the secretariat, committee chairs, press corps, and staff. That is to say, a lot of people. Especially if that were to be your first stint at organizing anything at a larger scale than your desk. And I've had my fair share of arguing with my parents about hiding my room. That's not my desk, but it closely resembles it. Honestly, I'm sure that I'm going to talk about my desk after the TEDx as well. <laughs> Yet, the essential part of MUN organizing is exactly that emphasis on the student part. MUNs are entirely run by students for students. There is close to no teacher involvement in this project, and this is perhaps exactly what enticed me to do it. The idea of achieving something entirely or you're on your own, or with your peers, with your friends, with your team, is mesmerizing to say the least, and is, in my opinion, the greatest engine determination can have behind it. These things prepare someone for the time in which taking up responsibilities is no longer a choice and thus you're welcoming them on your own terms. Nonetheless, I have to admit that this endeavor wasn't bereft of its share of hard work, plan crashes, and last minute changes. It wouldn't have been a speech worthy endeavor without them. The difficulties entailed by this project were many, yet they were also followed, albeit frustratingly not closely, by their solutions. So what were they and how can we apply them to a broader context? That's pretty much what you're here for, aren't you? Well, the first challenge was finding the people making up the secretariat. That's the board of people managing the whole conference. Apparently, there aren't so many people hopelessly obsessed with boat debating and the UN who are willing to give up many hours of their time to organizing an entire conference. Well, now that I have hindsight, who would have thought, and I know some people agree with me. <laughs> Needless to say, not only was it hard to find people, but it was also hard to keep the cohesion of the theme intact. Many dropped due to lack of interest difference in opinion on how things should be handled, and most importantly, lack of time. As such, for countless times, I've kept pestering my colleagues with the flimsy priority speech. Sometimes it worked, but most other times it just made things worse. Yet, I've somehow managed to keep a core of die-hard organizers that uh, they thought uh, the very best thing that actually united us, our shared passion that is of bringing debate and diplomacy closer to students, closer to children, closer to our friends. So, with renowned resolve, 
we set up to do just that, uh, just that, bring debate closer to people, to students. Now that we had a team going on, the second issue was that of time. Making a 200 strong conference entirely self-sufficient for about 12 hours a day for three days in a weekend involving people from seven different cities required a behemoth of pre-planning. The logistics for the lunches given throughout the conference for the small army alone was something that gave us more than one sleepless night. When this is added to opening and closing ceremonies, accommodation advice for those coming from different cities, forming the academic structure of the committees, keeping track of all the delegate applications and volunteers, coupled with college preparations and exams which seem to carpet our multi-school STEAM schedule, a potential nightmare recipe bruise. Yet, we somehow managed to plow through all that exactly because that's what we wanted to do, to do that. By being honest amongst ourselves, dividing the workload into bite-sized portions, by being realistic, as time passed by and not by being afraid to ask for help when we needed it and we really needed a lot of help, we were able to successfully conclude most of our plans and even elaborate upon them as we marched forward. As the days passed by, everything seemed to get easier and easier. As paradoxically, we set up to work even more. We grew more efficient at organizing as a result. And when the waited for event came, we actually were ready for the unexpected circumstances that could arise. And to be honest, it did involve quite a lot of jumping up and down the stairs between the floors to coordinate everyone around, running turn for the three nearby stores for coffee and pretzel supply, uh, supplies, which really kept on vanishing. I don't know who ate that much, but they did. Every single break in order to keep the delegates alive and kicking, or debate, uh, debating, depending on the case. And cycling through every single committee session twice, so as to ensure that everything ran smoothly and that no one ignited a third world war with nukes. It definitely was the card quite a cardio session for the entirety of the Secretariat. Okay, so that's the narrative. Yet. What actually kept us going? What turned this roller coaster of stress, anxieties, and logistical nightmares into a success story? First and foremost, and I can't stress this enough, it was having a very well formed idea in our minds of what we uh, desired to achieve and a well thought out plan to make it all happen. Afterwards, it was a cohesive team behind the said plan which was determined enough to persevere through all the incumbent processes and deal with tenacity and flexibility with anything it came its way. Handling risks, not really perfectly, but certainly courageously, and turning them into tangible opportunities. So, to boil it down to one short phrase, if you have the why and the who figured out, then the how soon follows. After all, everywhere there's a wish, there certainly is the will as an old uh, saying goes. And that is the overarching idea I'd like to leave you to ponder with tonight. Remember that I've asked you to think about what these terms mean to all of you. However cliche or repetitive it might sound, in order to achieve something, the most important thing is to just set out and do it. I hope you found my speech at least ever so slightly useful for your future plans and laughed at at least half of my jokes. And thank you very much for listening to me tonight. Thank you.